making a life worth living and a retirement worth having is reliant mainly on two factors. One, that we serve people well and they provide us compliments to help us in our life to not only feel good about the service we provide, but also to help others to capture the reality of who we are as professional service providers. You see, the referral is the most important thing that any person in any industry, in any profession can receive. When we receive a wholehearted referral from someone who understands truly what that referral power can do for a person, then we have moved our life into something really amazing. Over the course of many years in working in this profession of marketing, I have talked to many men of means. These are men who tout themselves, who laud themselves, who present themselves in a public forum as being the gurus of the marketing world. Whether or not they are literally gurus or whether or not they just know how to produce themselves in some way as marketing gurus is entirely up to the truth in their minds and the truth and facts of their bank accounts. If they have lied and yet they produce themselves as multimillionaires, then eventually they may grow to that status. If they literally are that superb in their technological skills of marketing, that they are literally helping small businesses and large businesses to really produce an income and revenue to develop more people, to provide more homes, finances in this world, to literally offer food and shelter through the services they provide in the employee retirements and literally the salaries that they're giving to people through their service to people, then they really have made a life worth living because the legacy is in what they're doing for people. On the other hand, there are people who complain. They complain because they don't get what they're supposed to do in marketing. They complain because they literally have no opportunities in life, or they complain because their soul is not aligned with the work they're doing. When the soul is not aligned in the work that they're doing, it literally means they're miserable in the job, they worked at a company for a long time or a school corporation or literally even some sort of law enforcement for a long time, they might have a pension, they might have a retirement, but is it enough for them to travel, to see the world, to feel love in their hearts for other people, to be philanthropic without just providing a service, to literally give money to children in need or to openly help families that are poor, impoverished and seeking assistance? In my life, I've been dealing with a lot of family issues, birth family issues, old issues that long ago should have been handled by them in their own therapy sessions with their own therapist, with their own psychologist, with their own forensic scientist. I don't literally care, but not on my lifetime right now. But when I talk about comparing compliments to criticisms or complaints, it's really about how a professional company, a professional service provider who represents a conglomerate of sorts, handles that complaint or that compliment. You see, it's easy to take in a compliment because in theory, most people don't make a lot of effort to give compliments. They don't go out of their way to tell an employee of any establishment, wow, you really served me well in that moment. I am so thankful for this moment in time because it's the moments that matter in life. We take back talk in that regard. We see the person's soul in that moment. We serve their spirit when we give a compliment, even if they weren't exactly perfect. Sometimes people just need to be lifted up in their lives. They are feeling bad about where their career has gone or where their finances are not yet achieving. And when we give them a soulful address, when we literally raise their vibrations by saying, hey, you did a nice job in that, even though it might just be something you do every single day, people feel well in their souls. They're less likely to steal, they're less likely to lead to harm people, they're less likely to interfere with other people's human rights, they're less likely to do a lot of horrible things in the world that go on because people forget what human rights are supposed to be. Now, when it comes time to criticism or complaints, how we handle those complaints really say a heck of a lot about us in our souls. There's two types of people in the complaint department. There are those who are eloquent in their speech, who know how to receive the feedback frankly, and who take in that feedback, who investigate it thoroughly, determine whether or not it's valid or not, provide it to the corporation, 
use it for improving the overall service and productivity and performance of human employees or what we call human capital investments in a company and then forcefully sometimes or gently and gingerly other times make changes to the provision of services to the quality of products or literally do an about face completely to remove someone or something from a literal product line. You see, people are actually products too. They're products of their environment. They're definitely products of the training in a company. And when training is poor, we get poor results in people and in product quality and other aspects of producing a life for people in the world. Now, taking in a complaint is really important. How you handle that complaint emotionally is hugely important. You should not have empathetic or very emotionally highly strong people in the complaint department. You literally want more of the analyticals, more of the engineering minds, more of the folks who can take in data and don't get overly sophisticatedly angry, upset, emotional, annoyed, or what have you with that information. You see, you want to know what people really think of your services, and the truth is very few people will take the time out of their busy schedules to give you any feedback at all. But it's the feedback that produces multi-million dollar companies. It's the feedback that helps you know what employees are doing the wrong thing on a regular basis, and in many cases, you don't recognize who the good employees are, and you can't tell who the bad employees are because you're not doing enough secret shopping in your firm. You see, all companies need secret shoppers. They literally need employees who are in security, which we call risk management, who literally go in pretending to be employees, going through the process of the experience of the client, what we call a client experience, and we go through and we feel it our way through what it's like to be served by people representing a firm, selling a product, a program, or other people in terms of how they get served. Now I talk about people a lot as a product, but they are. They're a total product for our business. Some businesses really get it. I visited a little embroidery shop the other day. That girl was phenomenal. She didn't judge me for how I looked. She didn't judge me, thankfully, for how I probably smelled on a hot, sweltering day. And she literally just tried to help me. Now, did she go the full mile? No, she didn't. Did we talk and have a good time and make a good experience? Yes, she did. And that's all that matters. You see, serving the soul allows someone to say, you know, okay, she's not really getting what I'm looking for, but I'm willing to come back because I was treated well. In other cases, you've got employees who literally take in phone calls of great concern, of complaints, and those, phone, those people in those positions representing those corporations literally get off the phone telling that person to go to hell or they hang up on them or they just don't get their role in that moment of time. They're so annoyed by that telephone call. And you have to wonder about those folks because they don't realize that it's the phone call. It's literally the phone call that typically can start or stop a sales process in every firm. You see, when we went to this mobile society, we stopped walking down the street to our business neighbors to do business. We literally now have a global marketplace with Amazon and other huge corporations in our communities where we literally can pick up the phone or get on the internet, shop and have it delivered to our house without ever interacting with a salesperson at all, which means the sales profession may be getting slimmer. It's definitely getting harder for salespeople to make a living unless they're really good with their social ability. You see, it's people who have good social skills that produce for us good quality results, but it's people of integrity that preserves, preserve, preserves our companies for the long term. When I'm talking about personal integrity, I'm talking about people who don't flip-flop in their emotions. I could give an example of many of the banks that I've gone to for business, literally people I'm trusting as a corporation to manage my modest income revenue for my business, and how their employees so lie in their process of doing their work that I literally want to remove my money immediately. You see, if an employee can't show dignity and regard to a person with a small modest account, why the hell would a man who becomes more successful over the course of literally growing a business practice trust his finances, his revenue, the income that he is providing to many families in the community to a larger situation, if you will. In other words, if they can't help someone respectfully with a small paltry amount in a bank, then why would we trust them with a larger amount when businesses really grow 
and take off. The person will just go find another bank. Banks are on almost any corner, just like a church, and the reality is there's no difference in those places either. It's how people serve in a godly fashion, and I don't mean that in a religious sense. I just mean in how are they loving people towards their goals to make them successful in life, to increase their productivity, to improve their performance, and to literally get them an income in this world so that they can provide other people opportunities from that investment back into the community in products, services, food, utilities, home purchases, apartment rentals, and all the things that people need in life to produce a life worth living and a retirement worth having. Now, I've talked a little bit about those situations, but I haven't exactly told you how to handle things from a marketing perspective. So this marketing and mayhem is going to shift into marketing minutes at this point. And if you've stayed along because you get what I'm talking about, then you get the honor of hearing what I'm suggesting. When you receive a complaint, the first thing you must have on hand is a document that your employee will complete on behalf of the uh, individual customer. We don't need to make a customer to do the work. What we do need to have is listening skills, dictation skills, and the literal ability to take in information without modifying the language in which the consumer utilizes to tell us about the experience and write it down literally almost practically word for word. Then at the end of taking that information, we must summarize with the client the perspective client, customer, and literally say, so what I'm hearing you say are these particular aspects of our provision of service, literally what we're getting paid for to do, are failing you in this moment of time. You see, moments of time make lifelong customers. In order to have a consumer who stays with you for four to six years, each moment has to count to build the relationship. Once that relationship of trust is established, once that individual feels safe in their soul, they will come back to you time and time and time and time again. They will put you on their revolving charge of sorts, like many times I did in my language school, and literally I kept people for that length of time, most of the time, especially the teenage set, because they've got a life worth living, learning language to help them to get into colleges, to help them to get other opportunities in their professional life in the future, much more than adults because adults have a more difficult time learning languages. It's not always true, but they don't always have the same level of time, the same level of intake intellectually is not the truth, but it's harder to learn things later in the life. We know that completely. It's probably been a scientific study many years ago, but literally what I'm talking about is the complaint process and how to handle complaints. You take in that complaint without emotion, you write it down and document it clearly so that it's a clear, literal, literal record. You don't modify what's been said to put it into your format of what you think complaints should be because you can miss opportunities if you think you can summarize complaints in a handful of check boxes. You really can't. You could be completely missing where the real problem lies in your company if you do it like that. Then at the end of that intake and at the end of that summary time where you're helping the prospective client or the consumer who's been with you a while to really get to the pinpoint of the actual service that you're providing to people, whether it be the provision of food, whether it be the provision of clothing, whether it be the provision of some sort of technology, whether it be the provision of a person who delivers an actual service or program, you have to get down to the nitty gritty of what is the person really upset about with regard to what you are literally offering is for sale. Once you've established those exact bullet points of what's really the issue, and once you create the summary for your people to look at at the end of the language, and again, you sometimes have to help people to talk it through, so you need good storytellers in a way because you're creating stories and training events for your employees to share these comments from people who've been frustrated or people who've been in love with your business. And then once you've gotten into that summary point, then the employee says, I just want to thank you for taking the time to talk to us about how you feel about our work today. We openly hope that you'll give us another chance here to make things right. And what can we do to make this right today? We realize that you could go away and still feel bad about this tomorrow. But in this moment in time, is there something at all I could do right now to make this a little better for your life? 
You've taken a generous amount of time to talk with me, to give me feedback, and we're going to honor that feedback by putting it into our training system, by looking it over carefully with managers who have the leadership ability to make the appropriate decisions, to make changes if necessary. And we just want to thank you for this moment of time. Once the moment in time is over, you still have to produce an interest in that consumer to continue to come back to your firm. You can see that employees can win a sale in seconds and lose a business in minutes. I say that a lot and I say it in a lot of different ways, but that's what I'm literally talking about. That when people manhandle someone's time management, when people literally think they're in control of a person's life because of something required, when they don't do their jobs like putting oil in an engine, when they literally lie about topping off fluids, they create liabilities for your firm. When a bank, personal banker doesn't pay attention to what he literally just did for you and when he's called to the carpet in front of other employees and he can't tell that person what he did, he looks like the moron, not the guest in the company. You see, we have to make sure that people are paying attention to the service they're providing instead of just going, you know, I do this on a daily basis and you can't possibly know what my job is. That's not true. Every human being has the ability to sense what that person's fundamental job is. It's easy to see. In a grocery store, those employees are representing a major corporation who are being honored with the safety and sanitation of our little food intake for the protection of healthy bodies, healthy families in our lives. That's the fundamental service. How they deliver that service is their attitudes and their behaviors and their training and whether or not they're really in the right profession at all. Some people fall into retail, get stuck in retail because there's no way out of retail. And that is maybe or may not be true, but we're not always raising people's vibration to say, look, this might be a time for you right now, but if you'd like to be with us a long term, this is what we're looking for in employees. You see, that's how we produce really good society, is by helping people literally laterally move, horizontally move, if you will, and physically move vertically up the ladder when it's possible, or across to another program, or a different store, or a different location across the world. Now, I'm talking about real things in these audio casts. I'm not doing a lot of mayhem in this particular production, but I am talking about real things. And if you're not content in your own work, then it's literally time to have a call with a man like me who can tell you by listening to what you say where you might be led to produce a better life worth living and a definitely a better opportunity for creating retirement worth having. In our old age, we're going to need to produce for ourselves food, shelter, clothing, medical care, and all sorts of things for our entertainment because literally we're no longer working. If we don't have children and if the children are not intact in terms of their sibling relationships, you're going to have a hellish type of retirement. I know because my family has gone through that. I have siblings that have manhandled my life, that have destroyed my freedoms, that openly think they have the right to get into my property and monkey around with it when it's visiting my mother's, and openly that's illicit, immoral, and somewhat illegal behavior, especially if they're getting into legal documents that are private. Being family does not entitle them to those things, but I'm talking about real relationships and how I've seen it play out since my father's passing. If my father was still alive and still of mental capabilities like he once was, he would have nipped out all the shit in the butt. But that's who my father was as a man. He produced good quality things even into his retirement. And there are literally statues in the community that came about from his marketing and presentational efforts, his decisions with leaders of the community. And I'm honored to be his son. He always loved me for that, I think, and I love him for his way of doing things in the world, which was logical, a little emotional at times, but for the most part, integrity oriented from his years and years of being the man that he was. Now I'm wrapping up these marketing minutes and these concepts with saying, if you get a compliment, you have to make sure that in both cases of compliment or in complaint, that you pick the absolute right time to not only share that information with the employee personally, but also to figure out how to share that somewhat publicly without embarrassing, humiliating, or creating relational problems with that employee and other colleagues. So this has been Blake Jensen of Blaze Communications LLC talking about real world services, real world compliments, real world complaints, 
real world of marketing your business internally and externally to the consumers and the clients who literally put food on your table, roofs over your heads of your people, and keep you afloat in this very tough marketplace of Indiana and literally the world.